Eagle from Congregation Kolokayenu in Park Slope, Voices of Our Lives, Kolokayenu. And I am so very honored to lend my voice to tonight's program, and many, many thanks to my friend and colleague, Santa Samuel for inviting me to be included in the company of such distinguished Southern and scholars, and for envisioning and creating such a fascinating evening you are in for a treat. Amen. The golden age of the temperate ended before I was born. But as a cantor, the art of and the classical expertise are my inheritance as well. I was blessed to study this material in depth and great depth at the Academy for Jewish Religion where I was ordained. And one of my teachers was Cantor Saul Zinn, who is celebrating his 50th year on the Bima at the Hollisfeld Jewish Center. Cantor um, Mendelssohn recently performed in a fabulous concert on his behalf and is uh, celebrating this. As a child, uh, Cantor Zinn was, he wasn't a cantor when he was a child, Saul <laughs> was, he was actually, as a child, he was sent from his home in Maine to live and study at Yeshiva Torah Hadash in Williamsburg. And he tells me that he would walk up and down Bedford Avenue in Williamsburg on Friday nights just to listen to the great cantors. And I think people know about these stories. We'll hear a little bit more about this later. He was a boy soloist for his teacher, Dr. Weiser, with whom he actually lived for a while. And he subsequently studied with Oscar Julius. Saul sang with Zavitsky and Pinchik and Malupsky and Moshe Eicher and many, many, many more great cantors. And when we, when we talk about this many different times, he told me that it was really listening to their Medina, that the music and the neshama and everything just seeped into his pores. And it came out later as he became a chazan and a composer. And I have to say that it has seeped into my pores as well. As a contemporary cantor, I humbly stand on the shoulders of all of my teachers and my colleagues, on the shoulders of the great Chazanim of the Golden Age, and on the shoulders of the women cantors who paved the way for me and for so many women who serve and study now as cantors across the country. <laughs> I am a member of the Women Campus Network, which is a national organization founded in 1981 by my friend and colleague, Cantor Deborah Castro Gray. Debbie was the, is the daughter and granddaughter of two great Kazanin, the Castros, and she transposed her grandfather, Adolf Castro's music, into keys that really are friendly to women's voices, therefore adding contemporary um, possibilities, the car chords and voicings for us to also be able to sing this, this material. She, among so many others, have encouraged and made it possible for women to add our voices to the very rich legacy of Chazanud and Chazanim in this country. Today there are women cantors and cantorial soloists filling our schools, serving communities all over the country, and we too are taking our place in a great, great tradition. Cantor Rav Barrett wrote of the great cantors of the Golden Age uh, in the liner notes to the great DVD that we're going to sing some clips from in a little bit, that in the prime of their vocal form, she wrote, these cantors regaled us with their soulful interpretations of the cantorial recipe, leaving us with a legacy of prayer as art, which is fast disappearing in the world of synagogue music. So as a cantor and as a female cantor, I have to ask myself, what is my role in keeping that legacy alive? We all keep Judaism alive by engaging with it. And the same goes for Jewish music. Music is a portal into culture, spirituality, prayer, community, and much more. For me, growing up with a rich Jewish background in the Midwest, in a reformed community, but in a family of mostly secular musicians, Music for me was absolutely my way into Judaism. The great cantors of the Golden Age sang to or for the Kahal. It was a communal listening experience more than anything in performances that captivated and inspired and held congregants. 
And today, as I'm sure many of you know, music and spirituality are still pulling congregants into the synagogue and into engagement with Judaism. But unlike the cantorial style that we'll hear tonight, in this era, communal singing is often valued as much as uh, scintillating performance, in my mind and heart. And for my, for my mind and heart, there is a place for both of these things, for communal singing as well as these beautiful performances. I constantly strive to bring an ever-widening range of style and tradition onto my bima, including Chazani, because as I see it, a large part of my job is to inspire and captivate, to draw people in, which I hope I do, and I love to lead the kahal in lively and soulful nidunim, and I get thrilled at the sound of a sanctuary filled with the spirit of each and every voice, even hearing their voices tonight, just for that moment. It's so beautiful. And I also often dip into the beauty of Chazanit, humbly taking my place as an inheritor of this amazing and beautiful art form, a legacy that lives in my soul. Midrash tells us that Torah is black fire on white fire. The black fire <coughs> is the letters, and the white fire is the space in between, in and around the letters. That's the space of creativity, of interpretation. So just as Midrash is lifted from between the letters, so is music lifted from the notes written on the pages of the manuscripts. Our jobs as cantors, my job, is to communicate not only the black fire, the words of our liturgy and prayer, but to open those spaces in between. These great cantors of the golden age dove into those spaces. They sparked connection and awe and tears and joy. No matter which music I sing, whether interpreting tradition through a contemporary or a classical lens, I truly hope that I can translate and transmit the message of liturgy and prayer with the same deep kavana, striking the same emotional, artistic, and spiritual chords as I best can to engage my congregants and to those golden voices in the golden age. To Makoleni, hear our voice. Amen. 